miles before the bottom. Being in front of the pack means you don't have to contend with the slower climbers, so the best riders fight to be the first up the start of a climb. When you're caught in the pack, you're at the mercy of the leaders. And if you don't make your move early, it's not just the racers you have to contend with, but also the narrow roads clogged with enthusiastic fans. Many of these bike racing fanatics camped out here late last night so they could secure a place to watch the Tour de France as it goes by. Thousands more before dawn today hiked up the side of this mountain so they'd have a place to watch it. The reason? Well, here on day 12, it's the race up to the ski station at Avoriaz. Who are the mountain climbers in the Tour de France bicycle race? Today we find out. Every rider fears the mountains. He never knows until he gets there how well he will climb. Question two was, could Bernard Eno control the race? And with the Colombian, Luis Herrera, he gave his answer on the very first day in the Alps by going on the attack. Eno, the proud Breton, out to prove a point and leave the rest adrift. Le Monde is taken by surprise and asks his La Vie Claire teammate, what's going on? But Eno has his own ideas today and out to prove he can win in the mountains as well as in the time trial. So now with Herrera, the brilliant climb of a company, Eno wants to show Le Monde and the rest he is still the number one. It was here last year where Eno faltered and lost the tour. Behind, Phil Anderson is anxious to chase and Le Monde is asked to join him as he hits the front. But ahead, Herrera and Eno build their lead and at the top of the first climb, the tandem leads by one minute and four seconds. Now, for the first time in his Tour de France, the American Greg Le Mans has to make the decision he knew one day would come, whether to stay behind and protect his friend and leader, or take up the challenge for the lead himself. But for Eno, he's grown wings, and on the next climb he is now an angel of the mountains. And the man who once lived in fear of the granite rocks now relishes the thought of conquering them. Even Luis Herrera, wearing the polka dot jersey as the tour's leading climber and used to his homeland heights of 5,000 feet, is forced to follow. The Badger has his sights on the finish and who can stop him now? Lower down the slopes, the youthful Greg Le Mans can no longer wait. He's made his decision to attack. Le Mans makes it clear too. He can win the Tour de France and refuses to concede victory to even Eno. But towards the top of the second climb, the Frenchman continues to set a pace kept cool by water. The Tour de France continues unabated and the pair now lead by 2 minutes and 35 seconds. And between Eno and Le Mans, that means a mile, all uphill. The four times winner of the Tour de France is overheating, but haunted by the memories of last year when Laurent Fignon won, the champion of the time trial is now the champion of the mountains. Attracted as if by a strange magnetic power, Le Mans chases his mentor up the mountain. The American, now clear of the field, is free to try and catch him. And by a strange coincidence, along for the ride is another Colombian hill climber. With all his legs working like pistons, Herrera hangs on grimly to Eno, wondering what demon has possessed the man in yellow. On the steepest slopes of the race so far, Eno has stunned his main rival by attacking as even he has never done before. It's not too easy for Le Mans, who normally specialises in the mountains. His face is twisted in pain. He's glad to limit his losses by following the wheel of the Colombian partner. There are two men in the race now, Le Mans and Eno. Eno's climbing partner, Herrera, is too far behind in overall time to challenge for the yellow jersey. But Le Mans can, and he recovers a minute on his final climb to Aboreas. But over the finish line, Herrera has jumped out in front to win Colombia's first stage of the Tour. For Eno, he's won his own victory by knocking out everyone on the day they thought they could take him. And at the end of a perfect day, day 12 shows Eno extending his lead to four minutes over Greg LeMond. Well, tour's over for the others, yeah. Not over for me, not over for Bernard. I think it's over for the others. It's never over though. I mean, we still got two more weeks and uh, a lot of a lot more nonsense to go. Uh, things can change like that. If you have a bad day and it's finished.